Welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to set up your first validator on the Gaia testnet. Sorry about the cutoff. So the important thing is you have Go installed. I'm not going to explain how that works here. If you have questions, just ask in the chat. The first thing is we're going to do is we're going to download the Gaia source, uh, source files. Then we're going to build them now. Now we download the dependencies. And by the way, I've cut some parts of the video so I'm not going to show you the entire download process. And now we're going to install the binaries. All right, now we can check which two binaries were installed, which is Gaia and Gaia CLI. And Gaia CLI is a light client towards a Gaia full node. Um, it essentially does key management for you. So here we're now creating a new key named Adrian. Now we can steal my money, by the way. So here we can see our key. I'm saving the address of the key into an environment variable called my address because we will need this later. Now we need the Genesis files for the test for the Gaia or for the Atlas testnet, which runs Gaia. Um, so I'm downloading them here into test nets, into, yeah. Exactly, so these are our testnet files. Now we're going to navigate into the Atlas testnet. And here we can see the Genesis files, so the things um, all nodes need to have before starting. I'm saving a second environment variable just so that we have an easy reference to this location. And now we're going to start the node. So I pointed to the correct directory where the Genesis files live and now the node is starting. And by the way, this can take a while. And it's now that it's syncing with the network. Here again, I'm creating an environment variable, um, GaiaNet, just as before. And now we're going to extract the private key of our validator node. And by the way, these files were automatically generated when you started your Gaia node. And this is simply copy and paste, by the way. And now we have a third environment variable, pub key. And now we're going to initialize um, our light client against the local, um, local full node that's running on our machine. And this is the one trusted, uh, trusted step. Now you need to check that the validator hash matches what you expect it to be. There will be another video that explains this. Now we're going to query uh, our account again, or my account, and we can see that I have 57 fermions. I'm now going to show you how to bond to validator. So I'm querying the validator set, and now we're going to scroll up. And I already bonded some fermions, and you can see the one with 33 is my validator. It's the node running on the right. Uh, and I always like to use odd numbers to make it easier to distinguish from everyone else. I'm sorry that you can't see the command right now, um, but once I enter it, you will be able to see it fully. Now I'm issuing the TX bond command and I'm bonding 11 fermions. And I'm bonding them to my pub key and I, I defined this in variable, environment variable before. So I've entered my password and the transaction went through. And on the right, you can see that um, the validator set was updated. So now I'm querying the validator set, oh, I'm querying my account again. And you can see I have 11 fermions less than before. I had 57 before and now 46. Now I've queried the validator set, and again before I had 33 validators, uh, fermions bonded, now I have 44. Now the last thing that I would like to show you is how you can send coins to someone else. Um, so 
Um, someone on right chat asked me to send them some coins, so that's chip address. And I already sent him 15 Adrian coin. Now I'm sending him three more. So the command structure is very similar to how you bond. It's actually exactly the same, except that instead of send, bo saying bond, you say send. And you can see here's three Adrian coins more than before. Thank you very much for watching.